Hey everybody, welcome to uh, one of our first Walkabout Talkabouts. I have with me Ooh. a bunch of awesome folks uh, from DreamWorks Feature Animation. Um, so, well, really quick, I'm Lucas Martel. I created Walkabout Mini Golf. We actually all met up a while back just because we all come from an animation background. I made a short film called Pigeon Impossible that was the basis for Spies in Disguise that came out with Will Smith and Tom Holland. And so I'd spent in the animation world for a long time. And when we found out that all you guys were playing Walkabout, yeah, we met up a while back. And, and yeah, we just thought there was a lot of fun stuff that came out of that conversation that other people might be interested in. So maybe everybody could introduce yourselves, Fred. Sure. Yeah, actually, uh, since, since we last met up, I actually made a career change. So I actually just <laughs> left DreamWorks and, and I'm now okay. at uh, Epic Games. So I'm... I'm back in the game industry, so I'm I'm, uh, I'm still getting my bearings. I've only been there. This is like week two, so I'm trying to figure it all out. But I'll be focused on like yeah. special projects group, like uh, in-engine kind of animation tools and rigs and workflows. So uh, I'm looking oh, forward awesome. to getting in there and okay, learning awesome. all about it. And yeah, so yeah, that's where I'm at now. Cool. I already have like a dozen questions for you. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go for it, Sean. And. I'm Sean Sexton. I'm a head of character animation at DreamWorks, and I've been there for about 20 years. I think in June it'll be 20. Dang. And Fred, actually, I think you were there 22 before, 22, before a couple of weeks ago, yeah. right? Amazing. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I, yeah and, all the way back from like Simpsons 3D and Ants and Shrek, and then all the way through till Trolls 3 working with these guys. So. Awesome. Wow. Yeah, I started uh, in 2D on a show called Futurama, and then right after uh, the first four seasons of that, I jumped over to DreamWorks and I've been there ever since. And I just am obsessed with this game. <laughs> so I did a deep dive and I was watching YouTube videos on it. And that's how I came across you, Lucas. You were doing an interview. And I'm like, I got to reach out yeah. and just let you know how great this game is. So that's how I found you on LinkedIn. And <laughs> then you invited us to the game and we're so happy to be here. Yeah, awesome. Well, thanks. Yeah, thanks for being here. Ben. That's nice. Uh, my name is Ben Willis. I'm also head of animation at, at DreamWorks, and uh, I'm a little still bitter or sad about Fred leaving us, but <laughs> we're not going to get into it too, too much. Uh, super happy for him. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been at DreamWorks, I think, for about 16 years now or so. Um, right. Still a decent amount of time, but not like the 20 plus. But uh, um, yeah, it's been, it's been a, a great studio to work out. I think the first film I worked on was the first Kung Fu Panda. Um, right. Which was, I think, uh, um, which was great. And actually, Fred was kind of one of my early mentors when I first when I first <laughs> got to the studio. He uh, showed me. Um, uh, he, he he let me give get a sneak peek into how crazy technical his brain was, and showed me how he could animate using a <laughs> spreadsheet. Um, uh, but we could talk about That's that crazy. more some other time. Which scared me in my first <laughs> week, but it got better. It got better. Um, but yeah, been. Been been playing uh, mini golf here with with we we all got like Quest headsets. Chris, I mean Fred got a Quest One headset back in the yeah. day, a few years ago, and I was like, oh, that seems kind of cool. But then when the pandemic hit, I decided to treat myself to it because a number of other people had Quests. And then Sean, I think recently had picked up the Quest Two, and he was like, dude, it's awesome. Right. So he picked it up. <laughs> so I picked it up, and then he was like, we got to play this mini VR mini golf, and this is like the first multiplayer, like. Uh, VR game that I think I've ever played, and uh, mm -hmm. right, um, and uh, it's just been awesome. Like I don't know, I like I don't know if we hit the best, you know, VR multiplayer experience right off the bat, but um, because right. I haven't really tried too too much else, but this has been <laughs> a great chance for us to just kind of connect, especially since we don't see Fred as much anymore. You know, nice chance to connect yeah. and you know hang yeah. out. And we even got to the so. point like we we were all working on Trolls Three together, so we were starting yeah. to we liked the game so much we were starting to have meetings in here. <laughs> so yeah. like in the afternoon, yeah. you know, the three of us you know, would get together. It's like, oh well, we got to talk about rigging, yeah. so let's just jump in a game and talk about <laughs> <Yeah>. rigging. <laughs> we yeah. really need to do like a, a shotgun integration or whatever you guys are doing for your dailies, so that you can just have like dailies <laughs> or stand ups in here, just like draw, <laughs> yeah. add some drawing oh tools, so you can just like <laughs> draw oh my god, the frame please. With your putter. That oh, would that be, be the, yeah. You guys were talking about that like, full circle. Being able to like share images or like being able to scratch like a little sketch on the ground, and be like, oh, okay, yeah. so what if we did like this kind yeah. of thing? So, nice job, how nice did you job. guys sort of get into get into animation? Because all you guys, I mean, did you go to school for that, or I just know that sort of like the if you would have been like in the like mid to late nineties, like there wasn't much outside of maybe Cal Arts or something. Did you just pick right, it up on your own? Right. Yeah, did you go, did you go to school? How did you get into the industry? Fred, you want to go first? Uh, well, uh, yeah, you. Fred's got Fred's got some of the legacy. <laughs> so I I was I was lucky just growing up with video games and computers as a kid. I always had them around. Like 
IBM PC juniors and Apple two C's. So my dad was always buying mm -hmm. this stuff. So I always kind of had access to it. And I think that helped just mm -hmm. kind of shape my interest. But then, uh, okay. I was looking at colleges cause I knew I was doing CAD and stuff in high school. Like three, I was nice getting show. introduced to like XYZ and 3d space, but, um, we had this CAD program. So then I was like, okay, I want to go to college where they have computer graphics. And I looked around, this was like 1992. And there was no colleges that had a computer graphics degree. I think it was Syracuse in New York was, I was in, I lived in New Jersey. Right. I grew up in the East coast. I think Sean, you too, right? Mm -hmm. But, yeah. um, so Syracuse university had it. Clemson in North Carolina had it, but I didn't, I just didn't have the grades at the time to get into those schools. So, uh, mm -hmm. I, I applied to them and it just didn't work out. But then I found it was like computer graphics world. You know, that magazine. On the, oh, on yeah, the back of one. the magazine, there was this little ad, and it was like, DigiPen <laughs> Computer Graphics, part of Vancouver Film School in Canada. So it was a 12-month mm -hmm. program. So I went off and I did that when I was 18 years old. And it was like Jurassic Park came out while we were in film school. It was like the most <laughs> ridiculous timing of, oh, my God, this is the right industry to hop into. So, so right. yeah, so then I, then I came back, and I had my film school demo reel, and I, I, I got hired in uh, R. Greenberg, uh, Greenberg Associates in New York doing like commercials, mm -hmm. uh, like those shell gasoline commercials and that kind of stuff. And then, um, oh, yeah. and then, I, then I got really into character animation and I got hired at PDI, which then DreamWorks ended up buying out uh, for the Simpsons right. 3D episode. And then we did Ants and Shrek. And then I actually left for about four years to go uh, nice, to ben. id Software to work on uh, Doom 3. So that was my first okay. taste of like the video game industry. Uh, and then I came back oh, yeah. to Glendale to work with these guys uh, in 2005, and I've been at you know back to Glendale at DreamWorks since since then, until yeah. like literally two weeks ago where I had left. So, but uh, <laughs> yeah. and then I don't I don't know yet <laughs> so of my crazy. next my next step of the career, but yeah, that's kind of my path. Yeah. So are you actually in? Uh, are you still living in LA and just like since everyone's remote, or because most of yep. the Epic folks are up in uh, the Bay, right? Uh, this, so a lot of them, are, most of them in North Carolina, that's kind of where the headquarters are. Um, oh, but really? there okay. are the special projects group where I'm, I'm part of, a, a bunch of them are up in the, uh, Northern California. You're right. In, in like okay. Marin County. So, um, awesome. but yeah, I'd yeah, say I the know, biggest no headquarters chat, chat is in North Carolina. Oh, I didn't really, yeah, I didn't realize that, but I just know that, yeah, whenever I've talked to most of the folks, especially on the, on the media or sort of like dealing on the film side of things, they all seem to be sort of Bay located ish. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. At, yeah, at this point, they're um, global. They are everywhere. So. They're everywhere, right. yeah. It's just such a weird sort of like moment right now where, yeah, like all of the old, you were in a certain spot working with certain people, and now that's all kind of, everyone's all over the place. So, yeah. Um, ben, how did you uh, how did you get into the industry? Well, I uh, uh, even even when I went and looked for colleges for uh, uh for computer graphics, it, it was it was still kind of difficult. Like I, I was, and I was looking around 2001. That's when I I graduated mm -hmm. um, high school. But even before then, it was yeah, like seeing Jurassic Park and seeing uh, Toy Story, and then and especially that Simpsons episode. Actually, that very specific Simpsons episode you're talking about, Fred, where Simpsons in 3D was like was huge the, for the me. Where I did one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, where there yeah, was, was like a Treehouse of Horror episode, right? Yeah. 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 I remember that one. <laughs> and uh was it Homer and the Erotic Cakes or whatever was it? Anyway, so yeah. the yeah. Mm, Erotic <laughs> so, Cakes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um but I I knew it was something that I kind of wanted to do. My dad had bought me. We had kind of we had a computer and and my dad had gotten me. It was a Ray Dream Studio, I think it was, and <laughs> Um, and then I found like a bootlegged copy of 3D Studio Max, and I was like playing around with that. And but when I was nice. looking for colleges, I had gone to Syracuse as well to check it out. And, uh, and then I also went to RIT, which is obviously up in that area too. And uh, I went to RISD and all these different places. But when I went to Savannah College of Art and Design, it was like one of the only places that treated computer art like an actual like undergrad major. Uh, cause mm -hmm. Most of the other places, <clears throat> most of the other places were for your masters. You know what I mean? And even even then, yeah. it was some of it was like experimental too. It wasn't even like strictly 3D animation. But but SCAD actually had a 3D animation course. So um, and SCAD I, still I started out has doing that, 2D. Like it's it's a very yeah. art focused, and it's very like even yeah. if you're using digital stuff, it's still very kind of holistic in how they go about things. Yeah, exactly. And uh, but. 
No, I got I got very fortunate because yeah, going to SCAD was great, and and you know I had I had parents who could you know help me you know afford it, <laughs> and then mm -hmm. um, uh, but then when I graduated, I went to I worked at a commercial company called Charlex on this short film called One Rat Short, right out of college, um, and then well, there was someone there who been? I was there for about a year, um, and it was. Uh, it was it was tough, but it was cool to live in the city. My brother Matt lived in the city, so I, I kind of bunked with him. I was on his mm -hmm. uh, I was on his uh, futon for like a year, and then um, <laughs> and then there was someone that worked at DreamWorks previously that worked at Charlex as well, and he was like, "Hey, let me send your work over to DreamWorks." And I was fortunate enough to uh, get in on this like outreach program, which was kind of for people right out of school, where mm -hmm. you had six months of where you got to work, it was like a, it's kind of like a paid internship, but it's not even like an internship. It's like you actually get hired. And for six months, I was getting paid, you know, the minimum, but I was getting paid. And uh, I was working on actual shots from Kung Fu Panda, and I didn't have quota for the first six months. So it was like, <laughs> be with a mentor and work on actual animated shots and get paid, but without the burden of quota and, um, they actually, back in the day, they signed me up for like a four-year contract. <laughs> like it was like oh, wow. it was six months of like a trial, but it was like an actual four-year sort of contract. And uh, I mean, I don't know. That was, that was kind so. of at that time though, where there were so few folks who knew how to do it that it was almost sort of like yeah. they wanted you to apprentice, and they they were going to spend yeah. so much time training you that they wanted you to stick around almost. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. In fact, I feel like we need we should do that more. I feel like we've kind of gotten away from that a little bit, but we need to have more of that apprentice sort of program. Yeah, we're yeah, even the talking about thing now. Is something... oh, yeah, like having like like maybe ten junior animators start and then have like a twelve week training program and then start mm -hmm. on a on a film as like maybe background or mid animator or even cycles and then kind of work their way yeah. into the production. So yeah, yeah, I hope we do that. That'll be great. I, I, I could see that being so useful too, because even though like especially um kids i say kids but just folks coming directly out of school are also like there's a big difference between learning it and then doing it in production and just the actual right. sort of like getting into that flow of like of having a quota of having someone critiquing your work and giving you notes and having to deal with like hookups and stuff which for the folks who don't know is yeah. like how your shot links up to the shots before and after it it's it's right. just a whole different experience that a lot of people you don't get until you're just sort of doing it so yeah, right. yeah I, I think see like I think that when you're going to really beneficial. I think when you're going to school too, like you kind of hit a certain point where you there's not really much more to learn at school. You know what I mean? Like now mm -hmm. you kind of like have to, like you said, get that experience and 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 I do think, like you said, uh, getting a critique and that sort of thing, like is really important. Learning how to take feedback and collaborate. And, yeah. Because at DreamWorks we're it's very collaborative. You know what I mean? Like we, you know, it's a huge part of it. You know, I actually rely on, you know, my coworkers to help me be a good animator. You know what I mean? Like I rely on them for good feedback and <laughs> Yeah, we all make push me look each good, other you know? give each other notes. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, well and actually DreamWorks, you're like specific because you guys are all or we're all in the animation department, but the animation department at DreamWorks is actually it's pretty small, right? Yeah, comparatively. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We have a lot of many because we have so many different projects film. going on too. Oh yeah, uh, seventy-five total, have, I think, right? Like thirty, thirty-five per show, about. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's just, I think it's yeah. even less than that. I think we just saw a, a roster that was about sixty-five. So usually, total. Like, if you look at yeah, if you look at like some of the uh, other feature studios, they'll have at least a hundred animators on a hundred. Uh, I know. Yeah. Spider Verse, I think, had like a hundred ninety-two. Our typical <laughs> yeah. um, amount of animators is usually around thirty. And then throughout the production, we'll add more people. And then at the very end of the production, we'll probably add like another 10 or 12. Yeah. So at the end of the mm -hmm. title and the credits, you'll see that maybe we have like 45, maybe 50 yeah. animators. But really, we did most of the movie with about 30. So it's, it's, it's pretty just crazy. It's a few I people come in for, uh, to help pick it up and get over the line, basically. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah, like in the last few months, we might pick up like 10 people or something just to help yeah. get it done. But yeah, it's a pretty small team. Yeah. and. I mean, it's great because, yeah, it's like a real family, you know? It's like we don't have that many people yeah. at the studio, and the people that are there have been there for years. So we wow. really know each yeah. other well, and we really support each other and try to, you know, just get the best animation on screen as possible. 
Yeah. I mean, that's not Plus too different from us. Just more like ownership. we've got. Yeah. Oh yeah, the ownership factor is, is huge. You actually like you can point yeah. to like, oh, I did this sequence, or it's not like I just did yes. these <laughs> couple of shots that fit in with a right. with another 150 different exactly. animators. So now that we're starting to do so many more courses, like we're actually able to start building a lot more tools, which is I know a huge part of like of DreamWorks. When you have a studio of that size and you're doing so much animation, you can really build a very impressive pipeline, just sort of like an actual custom custom stuff. So yeah. in fact, is that, I know you guys are mostly on the animation side, but Fred, wasn't that kind of more the direction on the tooling and the rigging side that you were leaning towards? Uh, yeah, I mean, we had like DreamWorks, uh, ever since Ants, we were always using proprietary anima rigging and animation tools, so it's always been mm -hmm. proprietary. There's been mm -hmm. two films that were done on Maya. It was um, Flushed Away and Shark Tale. Those are the only Shark two that were done in Maya. Every okay. other film, I mean, other than the 2D films, every other CG film was done in proprietary tools. So um, it was around the time we were doing Kung Fu Panda where um, you probably remember when, you know, computers started, like the CPU speeds started oh, stabilizing oh. and you started getting mm -hmm. more cores. So yeah. DreamWorks came to the animation department and said, you know, do you want to rewrite your animation tools? And we were all like, uh, yes, oh. yes, please. Wow. So For they sure. let us rewrite all the animation tools. And, and that's now what, now what everyone uses at, at DreamWorks animating all the feature films is a software called Primo. So okay. um, yeah, it's, it's a great tool. I mean, it's really artist friendly. It's like really yeah. every Powerful. feature in there is related to just animating and keyframing. There's no, there's no modeling, there's no, effects, there's no lighting, it's, it's really streamlined mm -hmm. towards that. And um, I think you guys would agree, I mean, it really made an impact on the quota oh of God. the yeah. artist, the, yeah. the happiness, the, the, the amount yeah. of work they can produce <laughs> at, at a high quality too. Yeah, we've got I this have to say this time. Oh, go that? ahead. I was gonna say, we have this real time, the, the huge, a big part of the power of it is we've got like real time playback. That sucks, Fred. Was that yours? <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, that's so close. <laughs> uh, we have, we have uh, like real time playback, so we don't ever have to like play blast our stuff. And plus, we can see our characters in like high res, relatively high res, you know, geometry. So it, yeah. it allows us to like really work in real time, you know, and try ideas and, you know. Um, Which is. Something that a lot of folks working in games might not or might not be as used to, but yeah, like especially in the feature world, the rigs and the characters are so complex that like you a lot of times you can't see like skin deformations or those little things right, right. Um, that right. are really like if you're trying to give a dramatic performance, like you really need all of those bells and whistles turned on. But yeah, the only yeah. way to really see it at speed is that you've got to typically play blast it which means just like writing every frame out to disc and then playing it back in a movie player or something, which right. it's, you know, it's, it takes a long time to get used to. I mean, it is kind of like stop motion where you're doing something and you yeah. just can't hit play and see it. Right, right. right. Ben so, exactly. touched on this briefly, but in the old days, we used to use, um, oh. the first software that we had was called Emo, which was proprietary at mm -hmm. PDI, and it was spreadsheet based. So you would have to yeah. type in numbers <laughs> To move the character and we made all of our films all the way up until how to train your dragon 2 with that software and i think when people oh, come wow. to the studio and we show them they're like shocked it's like you guys made <laughs> a how to train your dragon film you know with this software ah. or kung fu panda one and um mm -hmm. you know it gave us what we needed but it was it was pretty painful because you had to type in numbers yeah. you couldn't see the character's face it was like a very low res uh, poly stand-in and then, just yep. like Fred said, eventually we got to the point where, like, we got to do something with the software. We got to update it. And they asked all the animators what they want. Like, what is our dream software? And then we came up with, like, a list of real-time, always high-res, you know, you name it. And they gave it to us. I, they spent a lot of money. Yeah. And, uh, how many years did it take, Fred? Six Gosh, years? It took, it took at least six years to get it, like, usable, that we could put it onto yeah. Dragons mm -hmm. 2. Um, right. And, and then we kind of beta still, tested I mean, it on Dragon 2. Yeah, 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 yeah. Getting that film, I mean, you know, the the tool was ready, and they put it on the show, and they were like, "Oh, shit, but we still don't have." Sorry, but we still don't have <laughs> constraints. We still don't have pose libraries. There was all these like, just fundamental things that we needed that it didn't have. So, in the course of the production, every like, every few months, we'd release a new version with added features and functionality. And then, by the time mm -hmm. Dragons Two was over, it was such a complex film that. After that, the tool could just handle, like, I think the next films up were, like, Penguins, uh, Home, 
Um, yeah. Right. And then it was uh, like, uh, what was after that? Boss Baby and Trolls. Like those films, like Trolls, the Troll right. just handled it like butter because it was it was not mm-hmm. nearly as complex. Yeah. I remember I uh, when we were making I... Dragon 3. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. Sorry. I think oh, there's just a little Freddy. delay in the, in the audio, which is always yeah. tough to work with. Um, but no, I think that the, like, just that concept of like the dedicated tools, because right now we've been kind of switching everyone over to, we just unified around Blender as our main modeling tool, which has some awesome, especially for all the low poly stuff that we're doing. Yeah. It works so right. great, but I have to say like, every time I'm learning one of those big, massive packages, the amount of time and energy that just goes to learning basic stuff and where everything is, you, you yeah. really can't beat stuff that is dedicated like if it's an animation it just does that and it gives you all the tools in a way like that's what gravity sketch is for me it's sort of like you can learn yeah. all of the tools in an afternoon and then you spend wow. time mastering the art or like the best way to do stuff but you're not you know it, you're not overwhelmed by options um right i know right. i'm trying right. to think of another one that i picked up that was like that like marvelous designer which is what they're doing a lot of like the clothes or cloth sim like mm-hmm. i was able to pick yeah. that one up and do a final you know a final um cloth or a final clothes model for one of the characters in like literally an afternoon it was so simple oh, cool. to use because it was right. just nice. dedicated a hundred percent and we just are doing garments so yeah, even so very cool. very complex things you can abstract them in a nice way so yeah that's uh, how our software is too it's like it used to take four months to six months for an animator to onboard and really get comfortable with the software now it takes a couple mm-hmm. of weeks because it's it's just animation yeah. tools there's not even rigging or lighting. There's nothing in it except the animator tools. So, Fred, can you say much more about what you're doing at um, at Epic now? Uh, I mean, I'm still kind of getting my bearings, and just just mostly lately, I'm just um, setting up my computer and meeting people and getting to know the different groups okay. because the the company is a lot bigger now, and they're doing so many yeah. projects, uh, and mm-hmm. they're kind of spread across so many kind of industries at this nice point. Man. So. It's kind of like meeting people in each one of those so that anything we do within the tool wouldn't disrupt any workflows in any other groups. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I'm still, I'm still within the animation department, but my focus will be on the, the animating in-engine kind of experience. So just trying to help them, you know, get those tools just, just to be more intuitive and kind of, uh, kind of more in line with, you know, what a lot of the industry other tools gotcha. are using. So the hope is that people can just stay in engine and just stay in there if they don't have to hop back to another DCC just to kind of edit an yeah. eyeline or something. They just want to be able to do it all within, which I think is a great uh, goal. So I think that was one of the reasons super I had with my experience at, at yeah. DreamWorks That's and super Primo cool. and all that. But yeah, I yeah. think it'll be really cool. I mean, I can see like, again, just sort of like using, using Unreal for doing the actual like, yeah, design or being able to lay stuff out, especially yeah, once you unlock the VR and some of the placement tools they have. But so that means yeah. though that you're doing all, they, they must already have rigging tools and all that stuff already exists in engine or that's kind of the part that you're building, I'm guessing. Yeah, they're, they're working on a whole bunch of different things in that area. So I'm um, still kind yeah. of learning it. I, right now for me, I just have to learn the engine. I, I didn't really know the engine. I, I've used it a little bit here and there, but the yeah. guys there are such pros. Uh, they're such, they're so in tune with everything that's going on in there that for me lately, I was just doing a lot of tutorials, watching videos, uh, watching, you know, videos from either other, other companies that are using it in different ways, even, you know, within mm-hmm. games. And it's, 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 it's really cool to see what people can do with it. It's, it's really powerful. Yeah. But yeah, I was happy my first week that like on the Thursday of my first week, they'd scheduled a block of time, like Fortnite play testing. I'm like, what? <laughs> I love this. This is great. <laughs> dream job so we got to we got to play a little bit of fortnite that first week and just kind of meet some of the testers and their process of testing new versions and what they're after and like they, they kind of specifically every day they play test uh for different you know features or weapons or whatever it is that they want to kind of uh hammer on so it's cool it's neat so the fortnite cool. side yeah. of epic is pretty huge that, that's a big part of it so oh yeah. i'd imagine Jesus. yeah mm-hmm. yeah that's so cool yeah it's so it's so interesting coming over to the coming going over to oh. the game slash real time side of things f- from animation just because like I know when I started doing this and just sort of scaling up the team you know I thought oh it'll be it's not that different from animation but wow yeah. it is it is a completely different process and yeah oh that's a heartbreak oh right Sean get there get there. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's sort of so like cool. yeah. where's in... those physics where you can go. <laughs> I know we need that. We got That's a note. We've got. 
Yeah, we gotta yeah, yeah. The, well, they don't they don't have a <laughs> breath. Um, they don't have an actual breath uh, input yet. So once they add that, nah. then we'll look at we'll look at adding <laughs> the breath feature. The nice yeah. thing maybe is like if the if the person shooting can't do it, but if their friends want to help them out, they can like get around. <laughs> yeah. <and> help. <laughs> yeah, that right. way it's like you can't just like <laughs> cheat yourself. You know? Yeah, yeah, you gotta. It's voting by breath, basically. You, until you get fifty percent of the people in the room blowing out, if the ball won't move. No. Do you think if you but think yeah, if the game ever got big enough, you would do uh, you'd want to do like a tournament sort of thing, or or do you already do that? I don't. I, I haven't heard. Of uh, it. We do. Yeah. So I guess what we've done for that that like on the public lobby thing is sort of like so everything runs through the I, our Discord is sort of like the main hub for us, but there's also a I lot of it. other folks who have their own servers, their own groups, like. Um, like, I don't know, are there a lot of folks at DreamWorks who, who play or even like other studios and stuff that you guys get together? Or is it mostly just a small group of you? Mostly just us. Okay. Yeah, like there are almost five or six yeah. or five or six or seven mm -hmm. people that were ready to play and we were like, oh, we, we can only handle five. There was a couple of times where we wanted to have yeah. more players in. But yeah, yeah. And most yeah. of the time it's kind of the three of us that play the bulk of the time, I'd say. Yeah. yeah. But there's a few guys we're that kind hop of in here like, and there. I would almost love to, and we're actually trying to actively encourage other communities to pop up, but like, you know, you, there could almost be sort of like a private sort of like, oh yeah, here's the feature animation group, and it could be like the DreamWorks <laughs> folks, but I know like a lot of times like um, the studios don't necessarily get to talk to each other too much, but you've got friends who are over at Disney right. and yeah. who are over at the various different right. studios that it, you don't get much, many oh. opportunities to hang out with them but yeah so like we're kind of trying to actively encourage those little things it's always it requires cool. moderation but the nice thing about doing right. that though is that then you do have a community that if you have someone who's problematic the community yeah. itself <laughs> can police itself and not right. and, you know right. you, you know when you're getting in when you're going into a round you know that you're playing with folks who have a similar interest or a similar you know whatever that sort of like common factor is is really nice so right that's cool Mm -hmm. Oh, Ben, nice. In fact, there it is. <coughs> Come on, B movie ball, get in there. <laughs> oh, that's what the. That's why the B ball. <laughs> it's an homage to Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for, for joining and, yeah, doing a little talk about here. Um, is there anything else or anything? Do you have a plug? Anything? Like, are you guys <laughs> working on anything that you could talk about or. Uh... I guess um, Trolls 3, well, right? Like Trolls 3, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, the movie Sean's on, I don't think it's been announced, but Trolls 3, right. that's going to come out, I think, November of next year, I believe. Um, yeah, so I be looking so. forward to that. It's going to um, be great. Um, and I'm, I'm, and I'm sure one. Epic, you know, they're doing their things. They got... Uh, they are, I mean, nothing that I can, nothing I can say that, that hasn't yeah. been announced <laughs> yet. I mean, but I, I'm still, Fortnite. again, just kind of learn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just go play Fortnite. <laughs> Yeah, just go play Fortnite. It's a, yeah, I've, I've heard about it. I, I heard somebody talking about that the other day. i got to check it out. Somewhere. It's a small game. It's an yeah. indie game. So. Yeah. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. Yeah. Well, thank cool. you so much. Well, this awesome. was awesome. This was a treat for us. Yeah, thanks. Oh, yeah. Well, well, thank you guys. Okay. Take care. Thanks.